Welcome to iLecture Online and here we're going to take a summary look at the various forces between atoms, molecules, ions and so forth called the bond forces. And the general principle here is that there's two things at play. Let's take a look at two atoms or two molecules. So let's say we have an atom right here or a molecule right here. It'll have a positive charge at the center and negative charges distributed in the electron clouds around it. Here's another atom or molecule with a positive charge at the center, the nucleus of course, and we have then the electron clouds around it. So when you bring two molecules together, you will have repulsive forces between the nuclei, and of course those are very large because there's a lot of protons all clustered together very closely, and then there'll be both repulsive and attractive forces between the electrons depending upon how they're paired up. If we make bond pairs that are favorable, that have lower energy, you'll bring those together and they'll actually attract to each other, and then there'll be antibond pairs that will repel, so it's a combination of the two. But what happens is that the repulsive forces between the nuclei, they're very strong, but only very strong at very close distances. The attractive forces between the uh, bond pairs in the orbitals or the hybridized orbitals that causes the atoms or molecules to come together, those are strong at larger distances. And so what happens is, since those are attractive forces and the repulsive forces here, of course, be nuclei, repulsive forces, at some point there will be a balance between the two. So what I've tried to do here is come up with these two plots, they're called me plots, and we have repulsive forces versus distance, and the general equation is that the energy is equal to some constant, depending upon, of course, what atom or molecule we're dealing with, times the radius to the minus 9 power which means this is the same as 1 over r to the 9 power, so when r is very large, the repulsive forces are very, very small. But as r becomes smaller, the repulsive forces increase very, very quickly and become enormously large as you bring the two nuclei close together. At the same time, when you bring the, when you bring the atoms together, the bond forces between the orbitals will get stronger to the tune of E, the energy there is equal to some other constant, times r to the minus m. And m can be anywhere from 1 to minus 6, depending upon how many electrons are involved in the bonding. So at some point, when you bring the atoms close enough together, the repulsive forces go up, the attractive forces go up as well, and at some point they will strike a balance. Wherever they will strike a balance, that's where you have the lowest energy level, that is where the the repulsive forces and the attractive forces are perfectly balanced out. That is where the atoms or the nuclei will then stay at that distance from each other so they have a nice solid uh, bond that will be very stable. So if, you, if the molecules are pulled up apart a little bit, you can see then the repulsive forces are much, much smaller and so it's not as stable. If you bring them too close together, the repulsive forces are too large and it'll push them back and so eventually it'll stop right there at the very center and it'll be then located at the perfect radius that allows them to have the strongest bonds. So the total energy is simply a sum of the repulsive energy plus the attractive energy. Notice that at small, the, uh, the repulsive forces are very small at large distances are very large at short distances so they kind of cause the perfect equilibrium point to be found. So what kind of forces are we dealing with? Well, we have ionic forces. When you bring two ions together, then you're dealing with Coulombic forces. The Coulomb force between the two, uh, po the one positive and, and one negative ion, they come together and they usually form bonds. So when we deal with ionic forces uh, and Coulombic forces, we call them, then we typically are dealing with intramolecular forces, the force that keep the molecules together. The others are what we call intermolecular forces, the ones that keep molecules together at in, in either solid or liquid lattices, uh, I should say solid lattices or liquid form, depending upon how strong the forces are. So we have ion to polar molecules, that we call it ion dipole force. We have polar to polar molecules, we call that dipole to dipole force. We have ions to nonpolar molecules. Remember, nonpolar molecules in the presence of ions will become polarized and then they will attract one another, so that's called ion and induced dipole, dipole force. We have polar molecules that can induce nonpolar molecules. If the negative or positive end of a polar molecule comes close to a nonpolar molecule, it will cause that molecule to be induced, polarized. And so therefore we have attractive or repulsive forces, that's called the dipole and induced dipole force. And then finally we have the nonpolar to nonpolar molecule, like, like helium to helium or carbon tetrachloride to carbon tetrachloride. They're perfectly 
symmetrical uh, molecules. They in and of themselves are not polarized, but because of the motion of the electrons, causing them to be at temporary moments to be polarized, and they will have some intermolecular forces, and we call those the dispersion forces. So here are the various combination of forces you can have between atoms, ions, and molecules to cause these intra- and intermolecular forces to exist. So the first one we would call, uh, let's draw a line in there, so the first one is called an intramolecular force causing molecules to exist. The other five are combinations of intermolecular forces, forces between molecules or atoms, causing them to be together without the exchange or the sharing of electrons. There's a nice overview.